Did all and sit down. <laughs> when you get a rabbi or a minister up, you can't you gotta let it go. Uh, basically, uh, in the Jewish tradition, we have, of course, uh, a variety of different observance levels. But the tradition is uh, basically believing that you enter into another place. You, you go back to the Garden of Eden. That's the language we use. We use a word, ne'en olam haba, as if as you are redeemed in the world to come. It's probably the most remarkable product of the human imagination, Sabbath. To, add, to live in an as if time, as if you are redeemed. And of course, the two major themes that we, when we sanctify the Sabbath around the family table, is the creation of the world. As a matter of fact, our liturgical year starts this Sabbath. We just concluded it, and we're going to start reading Genesis again. And uh, the second one is uh, the leaving Egypt and leaving slavery. So at my congregation, we see ourselves as a Sabbath-centered congregation. Uh, we're a more loose, uh, sort of leftover 60s kind of place, so people don't always show up at the same time, uh, which is really great. And they come for the parts of the service that they feel they can get to. And we even have people who just show up for lunch. And that's another thing that's just a practical thing to talk about. I've been talking about practical things that one can do in a con congregation to make it the center for community building. I think there's nobody in this room who is in a congregation who doesn't want the result of their work to be creating a caring and loving community. Because we know that's the community that will be with us in times of joy, in times of sorrow, etc. So uh, these two themes of creation and liberation. I've been preaching, we're not an Orthodox congregation, but I've been preaching for a very, very long time about people taking a, uh, a, a fast from their computers uh, and their I, I, iPhones, which, has, which have made us slaves. It rings, we have to look at it, we have to respond immediately. So I give them practical ways of doing it. And, literally put a blanket over your computer Friday night because your general tendency in the morning is to get the cup of coffee and see how many messages you've got and you can do it almost all automatically. We're sort of addicted to, to, to a certain degree. <clears throat> I try very hard to tell people that that's the first step they can do in creating a more redeemed sense of self. Uh, also, I, we're, we're a community that has a very uh, strong meditative and contemplative community. And uh, the idea of interspersing silence into our services, which are very raucous and very joyful, that that balance really works real well. And of course, the word now, the hip word is now mindfulness, right? Nobody wants to live mindlessly. Nobody wants to live mindfully. But the idea is, is that uh, what mindfulness does, if you are, if you look at, it's really a microcosm of the Sabbath. It's basically saying, I appreciate being right here, right now. Ram Dass, of course, in the famous line, we're not human doings, we're human beings. And for us, the Sabbath is a celebration of being, a celebration of getting into it, uh, what Buber would call an I, a thou, even though in German it's I, you, but they say I, thou sounded better. It's ich and du in German, but that's a separate thing. The, the book wouldn't sell, it's like I, you. So, yeah. <laughs> so I, uh, which is a place where you do not manipulate. And we have six days where manipulation or I in relationships are phenomenal. I'm glad there are people at MGH manipulating genes to find ways to cure people. It is not one, and, and, and really to have a Sabbath, you have to have six days of work. It's often a problem with people on vacation. Do I, you know, uh, you know the Sabbath doesn't have the same in, impact. So ultimately, what I'm concerned about is creating a Sabbath Center community. We've done a number of things that have really worked to get people to come and to appreciate the fact. A little thing we did when I rejuvenated a dying congregation, which was on the verge of closing the doors, a small little thing was we had a drummer. Then it got to other synagogues. Yeah, well, I have a band, right? So they got more elaborate. But the drum is a heartbeat. And people have told me that it is that drum that really is the reason they come, because it gives them the sense that they are truly, truly alive. And that's what I hope the Sabbath gives us, is that sense of really being truly alive and seeing the gift, the gift of breath. We have a tradition that you get an extra soul that allows me to take two pieces of cake for the 
dessert because of that. But, uh, <laughs> but we have an extra soul. Now, what does that mean? It means that we have the capacity on the Sabbath, uh, because we're not human doings, to perhaps broaden our perspectives. People in the United States have a problem, or let me be, let me be more uh, kind, are challenged. Uh, with the problem, with the challenge, with the ability to hold more than one idea in their head at the same time. You may have noticed that in our uh, raucous election season. There is a problem of the capacity to hold opposites or juxtapose the fact that there are more than one way of seeing things. The Sabbath provides that because it's a time where you are permitted to be more vulnerable. Uh, and a lot of our rituals are r r rituals that are very sensually oriented. As one of my t -t teachers said, the Friday evening service at the table is for prey because it has to cul culminate in lovemaking, right? Which imitates the lovemaking above between the male and female principles. And, uh, and uh, so, so there is a sensuality about it. You're supposed to eat well. You're supposed to sleep, take a nap, take a walk. And what you were referring to, we call the covered Shabbos. On Tuesday, I walk past the store and see a great cake, and I say, you know what? I'm going to get that for Shabbos. And on Thursday, I see, oh, you see that CD? You know what CDs are anymore? Um, <laughs> right? There was a time people had actually, there was a time they had those big black things as well. Right? Uh, meaning, I, oh, I, haven't had, I don't have time to really appreciate that, I'm going to save it for Sabbath. Uh, so that allows the expansion, if you will, of Sabbath, if you will, consciousness. One, one more thing. Just relating to David, to David, all of our monotheistic traditions, uh, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, all have within them monistic groups, which have been marginalized, which believe that it all is one, all is connected, and the reason they're marginalized is because monists don't care about turf. Now let's be very honest, monotheism has been a turf battle for a very long time, with each group saying, uh, the group before us got it wrong, we got it right. right? And that's been history. But in remarkable Sufis, Sufis, Jewish mystics, I'm sure a couple of Celtic spirituality people would find that they can relate now, what their imagery they use might be different imagery, but the bottom line is that they're going to really all say that it comes from within the spirit that is the gift which call it the soul. And that soul is our uniqueness. Because you know, we share a lot. I think about 99.9% .9 of our genes and our bodies are the same. So what is our soul? Is that 0.1% that makes us who we are, as you, you said, each of us being an expression of God. Thank, thank you. Thank you.